augmented reality is the ultimate merging of your physical world with your digital life. Another thought, unlocking the natural way the brain thinks. Using a technology that's natural to interact with visually. So better said, augmented reality is the most natural way to interface with your digital life. Now, there's a few types of augmented reality. And the first one I want to talk about is augmented reality in a 2D space. Now, many people have particular video games. You put your phone up or a tablet. You see uh, the video on there, and you see graphics overlaid. What would be an example of that? I bet you a lot of you have played Pokemon Go. Do we have any closet Pokemon Go players here? Or anybody that knows somebody that played Pokemon Go? I think there's a lot of people that are not admitting that. <laughs> but that's not the type of augmented reality we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about taking holograms and placing them in a 3D space. Experts are now calling this type of augmented reality mixed reality because it's taking digital and the physical and mixing them together. When you put on a pair of these glasses, they're transparent, unlike virtual reality, where you're locked away from the real world. The first time I put these on, I could see the sun in front of me, I could see um, the Earth, I could see Mars, but also see the rest of the world. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? We're going to show a little, a little demo here. So this is a hologram in this person's real world. They're manipulating it by their voice, by gesture, by gaze. You know, they can bring in anatomy class right into their real world or actually work on their own jet engine. Now, the first time that I saw augmented reality was about two years ago. It was under a non-disclosure non agreement. And I went in and there was a computer set up and it had a building on a computer screen. You know, nothing fancy about that. But over here was a physical model. It was a table with a cityscape on it with a hole in the middle. Now, there was a building over here. When I clicked on that building, and I had the, what we call a HoloLens, we'll talk about that in a second. When I looked over, that building was physically there. So they let me take the mouse, and they let me click on the building and move it down. And I looked over there, and the building moved down. They said, even neater, put your finger up, move over, and actually click on the hologram and make it move. And I was sold. I mean, I remember back in, say, 1983, when a friend of my mother's brought over a Timex Sinclair. You know, that was even earlier than the Commodore 64 or VIC-20. And I was very young, and I got the book out, and I programmed my first Fornex loop. Any programmers in here? Everybody do BASIC or Java or Fortran and all those things. But I, I wrote that, and the computer could count to 1 to 10. And I made it do that. And I said, if you did this, you go count backwards. And it would count backwards. And I was hooked. And that put me on my career path I'm on today. But I... Being a computer geek for a long, long time, I've experienced many technologies. But putting this on my head and seeing holograms, I got that same feeling that I had as a kid again. Because we're now we're interfacing with the digital just the way you naturally do. Ah, anybody here play Minecraft? Now you imagine sitting, you know, cross-legged on the floor, interacting that with 3D. So let's try to do a demo. We're going to hopefully the demo God smile upon us because we're going to do a live demo. So this is what's called a Microsoft HoloLens. Um, the industry currently says it's the, the state of the art for augmented reality. I'm going to load it up. It is a Windows 10 PC stuck on my head. It is not hooked to a computer. I mean, it's hooked to a computer to do the live streaming, but it's not tethered. So this is the Microsoft HoloLens. It's a self-contained unit running Windows 10. So it does not need another computer. It does not need a phone. It's what you see is what you get. Now, in front of you, you can see me staring at my menu. I get that by doing a bloom. I just naturally put my hand in front of me, and the menu disappears. I'm going to go over here and do the same thing just to show you. I'm bringing up the menu. I call it the Windows 95 menu because it kind of looks like the old style. But that's the menu in front of you. I'm going to get rid of it. Now, you can see as I look off into space, I see my little friend, the astronaut. Right, He's floating in front of this. Nice gentleman right over his head. Hopefully he doesn't drop from gravity. I have my action gram. I'm going to load that up. Welcome back. Isn't that so polite? Now do we see the solar system on the screen behind me? 
because I don't get to see it. Now let's make he moved. I'll take that. We can pinch it, and we can actually move holograms in real space. Now you see when I put my finger up, it knows the finger's there, thus brings up the menu. And let's play the solar system. We get a little bit of sound. I'm going to take the sound off. And there's a solar system floating around you. There's lots of demos that we could show, but imagine as a student being able to see a hologram of a motor, of a Trinosaurus Rex, whatever, in the classroom. I'm just going to pause that. And that is actually in, watch me fall off the stage, <laughs> in a virtual space. There's Saturn in front of me. So imagine learning in school. There's the Earth. I'm going to stretch way out. And there's the Earth in my hand. So again, our gestures, we, it sees my finger, it knows to bring up a menu. What a natural way. Instead of click, 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 point, 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 I put my finger up, there it is. I can hit something, and there it is. And it's right there in my world. So when I saw this for the first time, I went, that's what I've got to do for a living. <laughs> Next slide, please. So one of the, the neatest applications for this is 3D communications. Because there's times where you need an expert. I need an expert all the time. These hands interface with a keyboard. Not a keyboard like that, a computer keyboard. These hands are not compatible with screwdrivers, <laughs> with wrenches. I'm no good at, at wiring. So what happens is I have a power word that I use. It's called father-in-law. And he has to come help me. But imagine if I could put one of these on my head, so I've got this on my head, and there's a plumbing job like this poor person is, going, how do I fix that? But this person gets a first-person view back to their tablet. You imagine having something that you are not the expert about, and someone can ink right on a tablet, and you see that holographic ink appear, so you now know that's exactly what you need to do. It's like, yeah, there's three blue wires. You need to cut one of them. Which one? The one to the right, one to the left. Let's play the little video, please, and we'll show how they are going to collaborate with Remote Ink. Select Ink Mode to draw in your space. Air tap and hold, then drag your hand to draw. Your friend can draw in your space, too. I mean, what a great way when you're placing furniture or um, just collaborating on anything. Now, this is a contact lens. The futurists, I mean, this is today's technology. I put it on my head. But the futurists are saying that in 10, 15 years, this is going to sit right there. I mean, that's science fiction becoming science fact. Go to the next slide, please. Great quote. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it's taking place. And the power of augmented reality is going to be when we all have you know, these headsets on, in three years, they're actually going to be like a pair of sunglasses. But when they become a pair of contact lenses, when you're working on something, you can actually confirm what you're working on, which is very, very important. Last slide, please. History lesson. That is an Olivetti calculator that I still have that was my grandfather's. He did one calculation per second. So he's doing his books, it was manual, it wasn't even electronic, right? My Timex Sinclair, hundreds of calculations per second, incredible. Commodore 64, I fell in love. Remember the commercial, I adore my Commodore 64? I love that thing, I spent way too many hours on it. Tens of thousands of calculations per second. Now we get to the HoloLens. It has a holographic processing unit in it, that does a trillion calculations a second. Now let's put that into context. One calculation <laughs> equals one meter. One meter per second. At a trillion calculations a second, that's a billion kilometers in a second. That's going from here to Saturn in one second. That's how far we've come since 1978. So I hope you all get a chance to augment your reality really soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>